coming. Live! Okay. We are live! Welcome, everybody. This is Liza's Dish, live with my awesome co-host, Jack. Sorry I'm all wet from the rain. It was really crappy here in Toronto today, but it doesn't matter how fabulous I am because we have the most fabulous person to ever be on Big Brother Canada, and it's Scott! Yay! Yay! Hi, you guys! Hi, Scott, and your bobblehead. Isn't he the cutest? <laughs> I'm so jealous. Like, I'm legitimately jealous that I you guys it. got bobbleheads. It really was that. quite shocking. Like, when I saw them for the first time, like, I just could not believe that this is what I look like as a bobblehead. I mean, I'm not mad at it. It's pretty cute. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. He gets uh, more attention than me. No, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> okay, you're right. I'm that hard to believe. Um, I look. I just want to start from the beginning a bit. Uh, yeah. I'm before we get into the Big Brother craziness. I want to know a little bit more about Scott, where you were born, where you came from, but also the birth of Contessa. Right. No, very good uh, questions. I appreciate your interest and all of you viewers that are watching your interest in my involvement in the game so far. I have to preface my bio a little bit with just huge mad love for Canada. I thank you so much for all of your votes. I feel your pain, all of you that are bummed out that I didn't get in there. I uh, will trailblaze on positively for you, and I promise this won't be the last you see of me. Um, that being said, hi. My name is Scott, and I'm 36 years old and stuff, um, and I'm from New Brunswick, St. John, New Brunswick, and uh, I was born there, lived there for 21 years, had a crazy life. Uh, there was no hiding my gay in that small little city. It was a crazy uh, life growing up. I was always uh, my true self for the most part. I mean, I wasn't an out proud gay guy at like 13, but lived as free as I possibly could and, um, you know, decided decided it was time to, to move on from the Maritimes after I went to school and did all I had to do in the little old St. John, New Brunswick. It was time to just spread my butterfly wings and see the rest of the country. So I did quite a bit of that. Came out when I was 18 years old, left St. John when I was 21, moved out to beautiful British Columbia. I lived in Victoria for several years, had an amazing time there, started my drag career there, really. Uh, that's where Contessa uh, comes from, is uh, a combination of a little bit of St. John mixed with my life in Victoria, and boom, I just hit the ground running and started doing tons of stuff with, with drag. I had no idea that I could uh, make such a life out of, out, of, out of being a drag queen. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Left uh, BC when I was 27, went back to Nova Scotia. I've been there for almost 10 years now. Um, there was a question from somebody that said, uh, uh, in sort of the drag queen world, there's a bit of a, a, an induction process that, that you had to sort of be um, mentored by somebody, if you will, and sort of introduced to the world of drag queen. Was that true? Well, I tell you, you're hitting on a ma major subject in the drag world. Drag culture has truly been around for decades, and there really is quite a system to becoming a drag queen. There are drag families out there that are very prominent and very popular. And essentially those drag queens start with sort of the head queen bee who's been doing it for years. And during those years she wrangles in her little drag children. She, <laughs> she teaches them everything she knows. She gives them a name. She hands them her family name, whatever the drag family name is. And there is sort of that hierarchy in the drag world because you do have to learn it from somebody and from somewhere. It's not just something you, you know, figure out by reading Vogue magazine, you know, for years. Like, I find this completely fascinating because uh, I'm 30 and I am heavily immersed in sort of gay, bi, trans culture. Like I'm very all, we are all one and I find uh, I have a gay best friend for 25 years. He was like my brother. I'm on the fence, you know, it's all sort of open, right. open season, Listen. but I never knew this. For somebody, for me Please. to not know that there was this hierarchy is very fascinating to me. It is. Thank you for that, Liza. I appreciate your interest. It's a fascinating world. I keep saying that drag is the new black. You know, drag queens are trendy. Everyone wants, you know, a drag queen at their party. Um, and, uh, you know, special shout out if you'd like to book me, find me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, <laughs> 
And so I love that, you know, drag, queen, drag queens have been embraced over the years, which is why I think it was time to see, you know, a real deal drag queen make it into the Big Brother house as only Canada could do. Not the U.S. Love me some Canada for making that happen. But, yeah, there's a real culture to it out in the gay communities. I mean, drag queens were pioneers uh, throughout the gay rights movement. We really, like, steered the way and um, allowed ourselves to be the billboards sort of of the cause. And I've been a part of that amazing um, culture and tradition for 16 years. I have performed and traveled. I always have said to go where no drag queen has gone before is my absolute motto. I've lived by that. I've taken her to Buenos Aires, Argentina. I've taken her all through the United States and Canada. Wherever there is room for a queen, you will find me with my purse and a CD with a number on it ready to I perform. Love it. That's what I mean. Like, I like your sort of um, your entrepreneurial uh, view of the drag queen. Like, I am much like that too. So you take this yeah. relatively familiar um, concept, idea, person, and you're like, I'm taking this to the next level. Yeah, you're making a bit of a business out of it. It's not just throwing on whatever it is we do and love and experimenting it. It's really about embracing it as you have done, Liza. You're such an entrepreneur. You've blazed a trail these last 24 months and have done some great things in Toronto, which I think is you know, definitely inspiring as far as realizing that when you're given such an incredible opportunity like Big Brother and you already kind of have a bit of a platform, my yeah. platform about four and a half inches um, with a six-inch stiletto. Yes. And I have that have that platform. It's just it's so great. So I feel like I gotta feed off of this and keep that platform going and, and the good work that we do. So I agree. It's really exceptional. I mean and I've been standing on that miniature platform for a while now and it just gives you that slighter perspective, that little broader reach where you I mean um, my roommate and uh, I went to Fashion Week last night yeah. and I was with Tala because Tala's in town. Yes. Freaked out. Like we've seen a lot of fans. This kid, I've never seen a kid, I'm talking jumping, screaming, and I'm just like, honey, it's been a year, like, there's a new season. <laughs> it's, I it's, love hearing that. Right? It's crazy that you can, like, still affect people in this positive way, and then, like, you want a picture, don't you? Let me take it. <laughs> I love it. I love that you got to see Tala. She's the cutest thing. Oh, so you guys had fun last okay. night. That's good. She is such a bug. Okay, let's talk. Yeah. Big brother. Um, yes, girl. Oh my goodness. Tala's trying to FaceTime me right now, but that's not going to work because she's probably lost in Toronto and I cannot handle this right now. Oh, you're um, kidding. Oh, I want to see her. Sorry, Tal. Um, yeah, so I would like to know, I mean, within the bounds of what you're allowed to talk about, don't don't overstep. Um, Obviously, When I you don't. came out onto the stage, were you, Allison and Nate, under the impression that you were going into the house? Yeah. I was flabbergasted when we walked out. Okay, I want you guys to know that I have slowly started watching the um, the episodes. Mm -hmm. I just very quickly will tell you that I started out fighting the battle to get into the Big Brother house last year. I came so incredibly close. Four days before production got underway for season one, I got uh, cut. So fought the good fight again. And... Um, got to the point where it's like, I think this is happening, and I can't believe it, and you're out on stage, your dream come true moment with Arissa, and she's about to say the words, please, head into the house, you crazies. And she doesn't. Instead, she, you know, tells me, and I'm not opposed to being blindfolded and manhandled by security <laughs> guards. Like, I don't mind it whatsoever. I love it. I embrace it. But not in this context. I, we really had no idea... You know, I'll tell you, I was a little suspicious of something when we were presented our keys. You know that epic moment, Liza? Yes. When, when Big Brother Canada moves into the city and you feel like you're about to get abducted and things are happening, but you're still yep. not sure. Yep. And you op In my case, I open up my drag bag filled with fake boobs and wigs, and <laughs> somehow they managed to wiggle into that suitcase this amazing key which took me 20 minutes to figure out you could open it. <laughs> he goes, can, you can open that. I went, wait. And I opened <laughs> it, and I knew right away that uh, something is fishy because there ain't no key in here. There wasn't. It was a perfectly we cut didn't out. didn't have keys either, just so you know. I don't know if that's uh, – I guess they didn't have our keys ready or, oh, no, maybe we did, but our names weren't on. And I'm 
I was expecting, keep in mind I'm first season, I was expecting the BBUS key key. Yes, right. Yeah, it's a key card. So yes. I think I opened it up in my name. I didn't understand. I was like, this is what it felt like. This is my coaster. I felt like, oh. <laughs> and then I sort of like read the thing. I was like, yeah. you have been selected to, and I was like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Someone's going to screen right? caption that face, by the way. Scott, that's a lesson. Anything you ever do on the internet will be screen captured. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hashtag Liza's expressive face. I love it. <laughs> no, I was, like, shocked. I knew we were given something. I um, Obviously, you have that moment, and you just completely lose yourself. It's a feeling unlike anything. I've been watching the show for decades. I mean, as soon as Big Brother came out, I watched him as a fan. And you dream about that moment, and... Uh, I died. I think we all, like, I still get I have these flashbacks of just, I get chills when I think of that moment. But it all started to sink in over the course of the next couple of days that something still wasn't right about that. So, obviously, I knew something had to be up, but I was in Toronto with all my stuff, so they weren't getting rid of me that easily. <laughs> I, knew, I knew something was going to happen. I just, when everybody wonders that, did you guys know? I was like, uh, did you look at my face? Did you see me clutch my pearls? <laughs> I literally reached for my pearls where I realized I wasn't wearing any. I just oh had my, my hand on the chest. I was like, You're so I was like, funny. I just... so, tell me, I want you to just keep talking because you you experienced something that I didn't. Uh, yeah. Like you three have experienced something completely, authentically, one of a kind and unique. I can yes. certainly tell you what it felt like to be inside the Big Brother Canada House season one, but yeah. I have no freaking idea what it felt like to be in the war room with two complete strangers literally fighting for your spot in the Big Brother house. Like, what happened? You know what, Liza? I mean, it really, listen, I'm going to be frank about the whole thing. You be Sally. <laughs> I just seriously wanted to die. I mean, here's the thing that I've had to um, make sense of um, when handling this experience mentally. You can go in one of two directions. You can go in the direction of, oh, my God, two years of battling this battle to get to the Big Brother house, and they stick me in this hateful room where I don't even get a chance and yada, yada, yada. Or you can live in the side of positive, and some of your contacts, Liza, live in the side of positive where it's like, wow, I'm so humbled by the fact that I got to experience this unprecedented twist that they thought of me enough to include me in that twist. Um, the room and the work that we had to do was was brutal, but you can't deny the fact of the positive, which is we were a part of the show. We were house guests, even though we were secret house guests. We were house guests. We um, were a part of a huge a huge part of the first two weeks of the show. We got a ton of coverage, a ton of publicity, and the thing that I've been saying is like. All the house guests that live in that house right now didn't get the kind of publicity that Alice and Nate and I did. I mean, the cameras were on us. Honestly, like I yeah. thought the same thing. All of us pre-house guests, we all talk. A lot of us are still friends, so yeah, we're good. All talking. And I mean, I got a lot of camera time. I'm very lucky. The camera liked me. The, ca yeah. the deeper guys liked me because I there was no reason to get such coverage in the first four weeks. I never won an HOH. I never won a POV. Uh, I didn't do anything. I was never a have not. I kept winning challenges there. Um, you know, wow. I wasn't relevant until I was nominated and evicted, yet I was on majorly every episode. Yeah. So I have tons of camera time. I'm really lucky. Yeah. You guys, the War Room guys got half an episode. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you yeah. three got more face camera time than, like, literally Rochelle was irrelevant this week. Yeah. Heather was irrelevant this week. Half of them. Yeah. Harley was irrelevant this week. Like, you guys got more exposure than a Nick, that's for sure. Oh, for sure, right? Poor a Nick. God love her. I loved your interview with her. She's but a no, Yeah, but it, that was the thing that I had to look at, Liza and Jack. I really felt like it was such a blessing for the three of us to be pushed in front of Canada's faces the way we did. Vote for these three people. These are the three people to think about. While at a time when Canada was still trying to get figured out who these house guests were. We were getting yeah. this... You know what I mean? People were still trying to figure out who Sabrina was, who Sarah was. And um, meanwhile, they knew exactly who we were. So you can't deny that platform that you're given and that experience that you're given. So, yes, I choose to live on the side of positive. But I did cry, like, a lot as privately as I could when I realized what was happening. Um, 
because you realized you had to now after the same fight that they all went through to get where they are. I went through that fight. We went mm -hmm. through every process leading up to Arissa letting him in the house, except for them not letting me in the house, them sending me somewhere else. So right. it's, it's a tricky adjustment to experience it that way, but um, but it definitely was uh, an amazing moment to be in there, and we'll we'll get into it. I'm sure it was a crazy yeah, time. Yeah, we'll talk. Um, so give me a little a little perspective, because we could only really see what looked like you know that center table and uh, presumably three small cot like beds on the outside. Where do you shower? I didn't I didn't see a shower. Yeah, what, what? I didn't see a toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's the that's I swear that's probably the most popular question I've been given. Where did you shower? <laughs> Well, where we showered was in a bucket. Nate licked me all clean, <laughs> and then I licked him clean, and then we loofed with a towel, and we were done. No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, obviously, I can't, uh, you know, get into too much of the production side of it. I think that the Big Brother would love for the uh, mystery around that to still exist. Okay. So, but there were showering facilities and a private toilet. Yeah, like we obviously did release our extremities somewhere. And I did wash my box somewhere, like I did. So for, for it was the most part, like, without revealing any secrets, like I'm not in to get anybody in trouble here. But like, for the most part, it seriously was you three stuck in a room for a yeah. week. Yeah, like Liza, I swear to God, it I was like imagine. it was four walls, right, with 700 lights beaming down on you. So I mean, I saved a lot of money. Mom. I saved a lot of money not tanning in your tanning salon <laughs> that week because I just tanned myself under the lights. Um, but we really did have just those four walls, and we literally, really, truly did live in there um, for seven days straight. And we just talked to each other. I thank God for Nate and his arms and chest. I got, I was very entertained. And then Allison and I, and, and we tried to entertain each other as much as we could because we immediately knew when we got in there, and we both agreed within the first 20 minutes that this was going to be a massive challenge and probably somewhat traumatizing. So who the heck wants drama of like each of us stabbing each other in the back and fighting ferociously against each other on top of that room? I thought mm -hmm. it, it, we all agreed it would just be way too much drama <laughs> and way too much intensity yeah. to mm -hmm. fight against each other while still trying to fight for our lives in that room. So, I literally cannot imagine. So I lasted 29 days and... Uh, there were, I was the fifth to go, so there were 10 people I left behind me. So, I mean, the, the night I left, there were 11 people still in that house, 12 of you include Tom, that's very complicated. So that house was getting smaller and smaller every time someone got evicted. Yeah. And, like, literally, Scott, I feel like I was going nuts in a massive house with 11 people. I cannot fathom the psychological ramifications of a four-wall room for yeah. seven Like, that's what I'm saying, Liza. We literally saw on the monitors the house guests. The first thing I said to Nate and Allison was, oh, my God, look it. She just walked from that room into the kitchen. Oh, this one decided to leave the bedroom, just went into the bathroom. And they were whining and crying about things. I said, yeah, bitches have no reason to whine and cry. I have four walls. So I'll tell you, it was hard to imagine uh, managing ourselves in that room, but the thing that was manageable about it, we didn't have other rooms we could walk into. We didn't have a break away from each other, but we did yeah. have just the seven days. And I would, I, would wager, I would wager that that seven days is probably the legal – amount of time you could last in a room like that and not go crazy. So I, I felt like it was not imagine. Week. Yeah, we did it for like a week, so it wasn't too bad. But like two weeks, I would have gone like bonkers. Well, this is one of the main thing I was trying to tell people when I was evicted was that someone was like, oh, you only lasted a month. Shut up. I was like, you don't understand. I was like, in that house, a day is a week, a week is a month, a month is a year. So I lasted 30 days. I lasted the psychological equivalent of one year of my life. So, in my opinion, I think you guys were in there the psychological equivalent of a month. Oh, God, I love you for that. Because that's what I've been saying. I literally feel like what we did in that one week is the equivalent. It feels like the equivalent of, like, a few weeks for sure, at least in publicity. 
I feel like you, you could stress that over. You have spent more face-to-face -face eye contact time with Nate and Allison, who were relative strangers. You yeah. have spent more face time with them than probably the vast majority of your best friends. Mm. You couldn't be more right. You couldn't be more right. And, um, and it was a weird dynamic to be in. I was very thankful. I mean, for me, like I said, to be a part of this show, to not be at work, you know, to be living my dream, you know, you, you really try to come up with those kinds of things to rationalize your your fears of being in that room away. Because you could go into that hole and start to think about that room. There were hours that go by with no contact, no cameras, no televisions for us mm -hmm. to watch. So you literally could go into that dark hole, but we didn't. And we, we literally just thought about just what a blessing it was to be there. And, you know, like I said, they put me in there with Nate, who was just... A darling, and he you just, love he Nate. Being, I haven't even talked to Nate. What is he? He so was receptive, there? receptive to all my advances, <laughs> and I just, I really appreciated him for that. Like I would have been just bored crazy. Like Allison was like one of those weird girls. Like okay, so you know how Liza I can tell instantly that like, if we were having a slumber party, you would let me do your makeup, you would let me do your hair. Yeah. We'd have that a is. whole time. We do Manny's petties. Allison would not let me touch her hair. She would not let me do her makes up. I, I felt like I couldn't bond with her in the beginning. Like I felt like she was really hard to bond with. I would go, oh, here, let me get the back of your hair with the flat iron. No, 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 no. Don't touch me. Don't touch my hair. Oh, my goodness. Was, I'm going to get Allison when she comes out, and then I'm going to do her makeup, and I'm going to send you a picture like, <laughs> I know, yeah, you will, right? I'm sure. But that's why I was so grateful for Nate, because we could, like, love each other, too, and have that back and forth, so... Um, Jack, I need you to stay on um, the YouTube comments because yep. I realized if I try to refresh YouTube, it actually stalls our video. Yep. Like it happened in oh. the end. Yeah, guys, um, there's not a lot of questions yet, so um, you can ask questions. I think I have some. Try. I have a question. We're, okay. we're going off the rails here, but um, I have a Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. We know each other. Yep. Uh, she's a mega fan. Hi, Kim. It's Cabin or Cabin or Cabin, yeah. you're going to kill me for not knowing your last name, but we know who Kimberly is. Okay, Scott, the first question from Kimberly, there are a few, is if Contessa had to do performance a performance tonight based on the time she spent in the Big Brother house, um, what song would she choose and why? Ooh. Oh, that question is hateful. Oh, my God. How, <laughs> am I gonna, how am I going to answer that question? Oh, my goodness. Um, Other than I will survive, because that's what came to mind first. <laughs> I'll tell you, probably what I would do in that war room is I would do Beyonce's Run the World, Girls. Run the World, we run this. Oh, I don't run the World, Girls. girls. Run the world, girls. Okay. Yeah, because I felt like a warrior, and I felt like I was up there, we were running it, honey. I was like, it's all girl power up in here. So I probably might do that with some war room. You know, videos in the back. I feel like poor Jackie. I feel like Jackie can't get a word in edgewise. Do you have anything oh, no, you'd no, like no. to say to me? <laughs> you know, I'm just going with the flow. But um, I do sure. have a question. I might be jumping a little too far here, but um, when you right when you first got in there, what were your first impressions? Did you think, hey, maybe I can? You know, did you think you were going to be the one, or did you think there were competition, or what were what was your first impressions? <laughs> Okay, so obviously I did like a rewind about 20 times and every single time I peed myself laughing at my face. When I took the blindfolds off, I clutched the pearls, I let out a gasp and I just said, oh my Lanta, how are we going to do this? I did. So that was my instant reaction and then obviously... Uh, like within the first couple of hours, oh my god, this is gonna sound awful. And like every time I talk about it to like mutual friends, they're like, "Well, don't ever say that in an interview, and don't ever give like, <laughs> don't ever give that opinion." But like it's my personality, and I'm like somewhat humorous about it. I, I'm a bit of a jokester, um, but I know my life very well, and I know what I'm capable of, and I have been validated over the years by some incredible people through the drag work that I've done. So I know the tricks that I have up my sleeve. Mm -hmm. When I took the blindfolds off and I looked at Nate and I looked at Allison, I swear to God, for the first hour, I truly believed that they were actors and oh. that I was being like Big Brother punked. I really thought, how are these two darling children, 23 and 25 years old, 
going to withstand the drag queen hurricane that I'm about to release in this room. I mean, I instantly could spout off about five or six things I was going to do, and the, the humor and the funny and the personality came out, and I just, like, I just, I just, I really was puzzled for, like, the first night uh, about the pairing of the three of us, because I just thought mm -hmm. they were a little bit more, a, a little less experienced, I guess, maybe, uh, as I was, and a little bit more... Um, I don't know, Just I just thought, like, the pairing, I thought in the beginning might, might have been a little bit unfair. But they didn't know I was yeah. a drag queen at the time. So, you know, so I did. I, I, I wondered that. I just really, I didn't believe anything. I thought, all of this is a joke. I didn't know if they mm -hmm. were real. I didn't know if that wall was real. I just was waiting for someone to come out and go, psych. And then I just wanted to <laughs> so, I just cannot imagine, like, you come out thinking you're going into the house, blindfolded and then you you know they take the blindfold off in this room like I cannot imagine yeah I, like I hey you're going to be in this room for the next week what oh no go ahead oh yeah. sorry I just I have all these fans have questions so I'm just trying to get them in I have a Martina yeah. Testaverde you're going to kill me for that um, she says question for Scott if you got into if you got into the Big Brother house uh, what would your strategy have been besides outfits and glitter? She obviously thinks you're Gary. Um, yeah. but other than being, you know, Contessa yeah. Fabulous, after watching the cast for a week, actually, you, you're you going to answer in tandem. Answer Martina's question about your strategy. Yeah. I want to know that you guys didn't have sound, right? No. So you couldn't hear the strategizing, but could you visually yeah. um, gather sort of who the power players were, who this showmances were like? Could you see yes. what was going on? We could definitely see what was going on very quickly. We didn't have sound. The first instinct that we did get sound was when we won that prize and we were able to see uh, Andrew's nominations. So I feel like when I saw those nominations, I was kind of on the right track as far as who the power players were. I just didn't think the drama at all was as heavy as it was it's at that heavy, moment. Right? You watched our season, I suppose, right? Oh yeah, you we guys were like the Waltons. Oh, you were! Yeah. I was so sweet. Like there was an air of like I mean we were we were reality characters, but there was an air of sort of um, common respect and dignity, uh, save yeah. for a few people who went off the rails. Topaz Emmett, um, Gary, no big deal. Um, yeah. But yeah, like we didn't really like go after the jugular, no. and this house is like all it's over crazy the place already. So it's disloyal. It's like, crazy already, Eliza. I really just, I was dying. The minute I saw them on the TVs for the first time, I just literally almost peed my pants because I just couldn't believe how scary the men looked. I was like, I'm used to aggressive, strong men. I've worked in the night nightclub industry all over the place, and I'm not afraid of a man with tattoos, but I saw the looks on their faces for the first time after that competition where they were in overalls and they had to, with the potatoes. Oh, my God. And I thought, oh, my God, they're scary. Like, I was afraid of them. But, like, to get back to... um. Uh, her question just for a second, but before I do, because I did have a strategy and a plan, you know, had I gone in there, what I was truly going to do, but really quick, you know, obviously people will make references all the time about Gary and I, and I was really prepared for the comparisons and what people would think and say, and I have to tell you that I truly could have been a bitter Betty last year, having come out of that experience and seeing, oh, Okay, so we have made it to about four days before production, and they have been cheating on me this whole time with Gary. <laughs> and like, which, and so you could, like, you think that, and you just think, but then you see Gary, you watch it, and I have such mad love for Gary and what he was able to do and be himself in that larger than life personality. But for people to compare us is just so strange to me. Like, you, it's like comparing two Asian people. If, like, there were two Asian people in the Big Brother house, Oh, why they get another Asian in there? I mean, she's just like this one. I mean, gay men possess very similar characteristics, and it's very important for me to get this message out there. We possess flamboyancy. We possess that larger-than-life, high-pitched voice personality. We share those similarities. It does not make us the same people. And quite frankly, I really do feel that people watching Big Brother Canada want their gays to be loud, proud, flamboyant, funny yeah. characters. We need some characters. That's what I think the house craves. So I feel like I served that in spades in my own way with my drag queen personality. And uh, so, you know, it's weird to watch the house right now. I feel like there's no real color in it. I 
agree, but that's a whole other thing. We'll talk it's about that. It's a whole other thing. Second. But the strategy um, in reference to her question, then really quick, I obviously would have gone right in there. So disappointed that Allison went in there and ignored all of our plans. Her, The three of us talked, me and Allison and I, about what we were going to do. She's not doing any of it. Oh, no. Give me some ideas. Talk right yeah. now. What, like, what we was said, the plan? The plan was obviously to go in there and snuff out, which I'm now realizing, were the Ica, you know, the John, the Nettas, the Adels, the ones that had that, that ambition to break up that first five alliance, to break up some of that muscle with Andrew and Kenny. So we really talked about that being the thing that needed to be done. However, you know, uh, Allison would say, but we obviously can't go in there and just charge like a bull at them. You have to get a sense of who likes who, who would be on your side, who's feeling what. So we agreed that that's what you should do. So she probably did that, but instead of realizing she had allies to work to get rid of, allies to work with to get rid of Andrew and Kenny and those ones, she didn't go in that direction. She decided to stay in Andrew's bed and cuddle up to him. I mean, he was my boyfriend. Like when we were in the freaking like war room, we picked our favorites and Andrew was gonna be my husband and Kenny was going to be, <laughs> and Kenny was going to be Allison's husband. Allison Little does she know he is a homosexual, so that is not going to happen. But I feel like we had a strategy when we were going to go in there, and I definitely would have aligned with like Ika. I would have been so excited when she went and had a household. I would have jumped all over, her and the work would have gotten done. And I would have worked with her to pioneer the split up of some of that muscle. Which, That's like, true. I mean, this is just. I mean, it's it's early, and we're we're only seeing a little bit, but. I completely agree with you that uh, I think Allison is a very smart player. I do. I think she's a mega mm -hmm. fan. Me too. And I think she has really good intentions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I was confused that, you know, her tongue is halfway down Andrew's throat. So unless yeah. she is completely playing him, and I'm hope I'm hoping we just get like a mwah, ah, ah, ah. So I know. I'm hoping so. Because you're right. You've got to go after Kenny and Andrew. Except the only way I can justify she's a little bit smart here is knowing that they are the power players, knowing that they are the biggest threats. That's why I show man's Tom. And if that double eviction didn't fuck me, then my Tom would have gone first like was always my plan. Tom was my shield. Even though we were a pair, he was going to go first. And double eviction or not, he did go first. Yes, he did. And so she is a little bit smart in that she's linking up with a massive power player, and that power player is probably going to go first. Yes. I love where your head's at. So let me add to what you just said by saying that I would love it if Allison, and obviously Nate and I are catching up on all the shows right now. We, later on this week, should be ready for the live eviction on Thursday to be live tweeting everybody our commentary and our, our you know predictions. Um, but up until now, all I can see is, you know, Allison's doing a lot of legwork around um, securing herself with Andrew. So the golden, beautiful television moment, and I live for a television moment, would be if she were to be in a situation where she was in the middle and it was her vote to flip, and she flipped. <laughs> like, I want that moment. I want Andrew to be hanging by a thread. Allison's the only one that could save him, and she goes and she's with like, like Bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would love, love that. And I think I think people I think Canada right now is underestimating Allison because she was actually contacting me a bit before the show. Um, in a fully like, hey, I'm a fan kind of way, but as soon as her face was on that TV, I was like, I know you. I know you. You have Facebook, Twitter, like um, Instagram. This girl connected with me. She asked me a lot of questions, and she always said good things about me inside the house because I was available, because I tweeted back, because I con yeah. connected with her. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's gathering information. She is a mega fan, and either she got fucked up in there and is right in the Andrew wave. Yes, because she is a mega fan. Plan. Right, unless she has that plan, because she is a mega fan, but people carrying on about how she watched since she was 11 years old, oh, whatever. I watched the very first Big Brother U.S. season one when it came out and have never stopped watching it. Oh, I wish some of those... We're in our 30s, Scott. What? I also watched it, but we're in our 30s. Yeah, we're in our 30s, right? So yeah. can I say I've been watching it since I was 22? Like, would that carry the same weight as 11 years old? No, it wouldn't. Yeah. So yeah, I just feel like I wish I would have been I wish I would have been edited 
a little bit better in the sense that I obviously did boast my super fandom for the show quite a bit as well. I just feel like when Big Brother was putting it all together, they had this amazing sort of entertainer character, all the funny stuff that I said, and that was the way they kind of presented me. All Allison really had to go on besides her mornings of doing her hair and her makeup and her workouts, was just this whole strategy and game side of it, whereas I was trying to balance the two, entertainer, strategizer, gamer. So I feel like she uh, she did. She kind of had that one angle that I, I think got pushed quite a bit, which helped out in the end for votes. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's a really kind of crazy situation just to kind of – Watch her in there, and I can't wait to see how that's all gonna gonna unfold. Liza, you appear to be stuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have a kind of question. Okay, so, um, I think it was a few days after you were, you know, the vote happened and all that. Some people on Twitter were um, saying, like, you know, there I, there was a, like a audio clip of something where you said like turn the AC on or stuff to production or whatever and they there were some people that were saying is he being disrespectful to production or is he whatever so there was some people saying that out there so I yeah. was wondering oh, there she what what is your response Are you there? to that oh, oh we can hear I you. can hear you let me just test my sound again oh there we go Hold on. we can hear you hi there you are hi. Hi, no, Jackie. So you did answer a good question. You asked a good question there. You yeah, were hearing. I, don't know uh, I didn't know if you had probably seen some that moments or... in the in the war room that uh, I probably didn't act quite like a lady. And I love those questions where people are kind of curious and concerned because here's the thing: I am obsessed with this show. It is a lifelong dream to have gotten to this point where I'm entering the house in in one way or another. People would have mm -hmm. killed for that. So I am not knocking the experience I had with it. I was involved with the show, and it was a great experience. The thing that people don't realize, though, is that as much as I was grateful, so truly grateful for that moment to be a part of the twist, we were, in, we were about to enter an unprecedented twist in the house, something that has never been done before. So when I say unprecedented, I mean we had nothing to compare it to. You couldn't as far as Big Brother was concerned, you couldn't really compare how we were all going to react to that seven days in that room to be able mm -hmm. to say, well, last year when we did it, you know, these people kind of reacted this way and this happened and that happened. No, we were all experiencing it as virgins. And there were a lot of things that kind of happened in there that really affected us. And yeah. I mean, all I'm going to say is, like, you do not want to see a drag queen <laughs> stand yeah. in front of a mirror putting on makeup while sweating profusely, just sweating. Like, a drag queen will never get ready in a sauna. Yeah. <laughs> she just it, won't. It's not conducive to her makeup. So, obviously, there there were moments where um, we kind of were reacting to things because when you feel you're like you're in kind a of room in like a, for a, week. a vice yeah. grip and your head's being pressured, like shrunk, you're like you a um, can react to certain things. But, I mean, that was me being genuine. That was me being myself. And Oh, yeah. So... It yeah, I just wanted uh, to clear that because there was a lot was of talk a unique on experience and... that came with it, uh, some unique reactions. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I and it's like, it's and like, a question. Yeah. I just uh, wanted, yes, Jack. Sorry, I just wanted to add. Um, uh, what was I just one sec, okay, Jackie. I can't hear you. You can hear me. Oh, here we go. Hi, Jackie, you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm, I think your audio is a bit um, off there maybe, I'm not sure. Liza, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. okay. Maybe Liza can reiterate the question. Sure. What's the question, Jack? Oh, you go ahead. I'm good. That was a disconnect. Um, so okay. my comment was, yeah. um, going back to Gary, I guess it's, <coughs> it's terrible broadcasting. Bless you, darling. I'm really allergic to everything. Uh, I'm going to sneeze again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Um, sorry, you were saying so much, and I was so intrigued. I had like a thousand questions. Um, my one observation between you and Gary is like, you know, um, uh, I, 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 gay. Uh, uh, well, he's not really a drag queen. <laughs> He is no. not a drag queen. That is the, right. the so, no, he has a whimper, and he likes to be a, a lady sometimes. Androgynous. And, yeah. Um, 
you're definitely not the same person. And my only observation, this is a comment, is uh, that Gary is very young. I keep saying this over and over because just because he is this massive black man does yeah. not make him an adult. Everyone forgets that Gary, I think, was only 20 in the house, maybe turned 21. Yeah. Like, he was a boy. And even though yeah. I'm this, like, little white girl and he's this big black man, um, I was make him... like, mothering Gary. Yes, no, it doesn't God. make him more mature than you. You are a grown man. So so yeah. this is the difference. This would have been the different perspective coming into the house would be, like, this seasoned drag veteran, you know? Like, that's different, bringing that whole drag culture. Like, Gary's just on the precipice of this world. Gary was yes. thrust into this Thank big you. thing uh, as a child, you know, yeah. who was inexperienced, and, you know, you would have brought this sort of maturity to it and this experience to the whole perspective of gay and drag if you're going to group that into a... Okay, this is my bobblehead licking your face. <laughs> I love you for that. I love you for that. Because here's the thing. I love Gary. I'm like, this is the thing with Gary that I just think I'm just so proud of what he did on the show. Is that you're right. We do carry very different um, journeys and paths with our lives, our, our characters, our lives. I'm 36 years old, been doing drag for 16 years. Gary's in that younger age where he's experimenting with androgyny. He's experimenting with gender bending. He's wearing women's clothes. He's experimenting, and I feel like he was so great for season one because as they talk about this puzzle that they put together where each each piece of the puzzle fits together to create a cast for a season. Well, the cast that was created with you guys last season really appealed to this amazing demographic of viewers that responded to people like Gary at that age, at that place in his life. Yeah. You now have in season two a very different cast who is relating to a very sort of different demographic, and yeah, they all have a bit more substance maybe than, you know, Gary and some of the younger ones, maybe this is, because I kept yearning for last season for, like, thoughts to get completed, for, like... Oh, you mean, for, like, hold on, grown-ups. Yes, I, mean, I, yes. I got told the other, yesterday that I look 24 and I want to marry that person. Yeah. And I was like, the reason I was so clung to Andrew at 38 is I'm like, you're a grown-up. Yes. Like, grown-up talks. Yes, like, yes. I know, and I can't wait to meet Andrew. I just adore that one. Andrew and Jill and uh, Emmett are all on the East Coast. I hope to reunite with them. But you're right. To, to craving somebody a little older who, um, you know, just could relate to you a little bit more. I was really yearning for that last season. I wanted sentences to be completed sentences with, like, two more sentences. We'll finish that thought. Like, seal that deal. Say, I'll protect you for the next three weeks if you do this. It was a lot of sort of talking around. Um, yes. But just that that's how it was. The season appealed to that demographic. I loved it. I was entertained. And for me, that's what it's all about. So this season, you know, some of those. So thank you for, for carrying on to the, to the differences of Gary and I because... Yes, big time. I mean, you yeah. and I would have had a completely different relationship in the house um, than Gary and I did. Um, Let me ask you something really quick, speaking of, of our course. relationship in the house. How did your, I'm so curious about this, so I'm going to slip this question in, but how did your opinions of Tom change when you got out of the house and watched the show? I love that you just turned this into an interview for me. I'm um, sorry, because I love you. My opinions didn't change because I knew the real Tom. The edit they gave him was shit, which is fine. We all stand yeah. up, we all sign up for reality TV. You can splice things we say together or whatever, and the guy you saw on TV was not Tom. They made him yeah. look like the most pompous, Yes. jerk of, and he was just such a sweetie pie in the house, like, right. and he was a sweetie pie in real life, like, I it's felt... He made those, I had a hard time with those comments he made about gays in the beginning of his bio, that was what I That's struggled with. just a little bit of Alberta. Yes, probably, right? Like, that's just, that's Andrew, when Andrew gets out of the house and yes. sees the picture of him as the cat... Leaning ah, over Penny. Yes. When, when Alberta boy Andrew realizes yes. Penny, he ain't gonna be so comfortable. Oh no, he ain't. Oh no, he ain't. Speaking of Kenny, yeah, yeah, what yeah. The fuck, you talk to me right now. Did you have any clue? What? How do you feel? W T F to the nth power. Like I died. I immediately went to the doctor and had him reassess my gaydar. Because, you know, my gay dog... Really... I'm so attracted to you, Kenny! 
<laughs> oh, no, look, the only thing I have for my, going for myself is my gaydar, and if I can't get the gays and the straights divide, like, how am I going to live? So I just thought it was shocking, shocking, shocking. I was really mad at myself that I didn't pick that up. Of course, how could I? We didn't have sound. Yeah. Um, I really obviously, uh, here's the thing with Kenny really quick. I'm so obsessed that Big Brother this year made the gay guy Kenny. Because as much as I prefer for the gays to be flamboyant, loud, crazy, entertaining, wigs and costumes, I love that it entertains me. Show I do. Side. Yeah, but I yearn in reality TV for the gay just once. So this is it, Big Brother Canada season two. This is your just once. Yes. That you get to make the gay guy just manly, desirable. I want to sleep with him. I yes. want to marry him. Like, I never say that about gays on, on reality TV. I'm not typically <laughs> sexually attracted to them. <laughs> you know? So I I'm love that I'm... sexually attracted to him! <laughs> God damn it! I know, right? I know. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but um, yeah. I have a tiny bit of a surprise that I wasn't expecting. Oh my God, I'm, I'm going to have a nervy take, breaky. I'm going to take down this... Uh, I'm having a nervy breaky. Look, hold on. Let oh me just go to my house. Oh, oh Kala! Oh, 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 Here, have a moment. Sit down. This is Sky, nice to and that's my co host, Jack. Hi. Oh my god. Kala! Nice to meet I, you. Nice to meet you. I'm having a bit of a nervy way. breaky. I can't believe it's you. you I just it? adore you. I just want you to know, like, you've probably followed season two. You're enjoying it. You're getting a kick out of it. You've probably discovered that I've had some wonderful opinions <laughs> that I've made about U.S. players, Canada players, but I hope you know that every opinion I ever gave about you was just nothing but love. You were my kind of player. I thought you were adorable. You were I entertaining. I heard that, too. I was like, whoo, love it. Yes, love it. We all have our own opinions of, of, of the players and such, but I love that you love it. So, yay. Yay. It's, it's, me. it's all Can about the entertainment. Way? How am I doing? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm on two milligrams of Ativan a day. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, oh, what well, you're I'm telling kidding. me that you want to go to therapy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's been a really crazy ride, Tala. I obviously never in a million years after fighting like a dog for two years to get into that show that finally my experience with it would be so short-lived. So you, you do deal with that, and I have a really good way of um, filtering good. that through my brain and getting over it because right. in the end, I was a part of that show, and it was yeah. a crazy experience. And now we're all family. I know, right? Welcome to the family. It well, is thank you. Quash. Oh, I would have made cookies. Okay, make me one. Quash, are you going to, like, the, you know, like you just said, you've been fighting for it to, you know, get on for the last few years. Will you audition again? Will you well, keep I'll tell you, Tala, like, it's so crazy. You know this more than me, I'm sure. Like, A, expect the unexpected. Love it. B, you can never have enough hats, gloves, and shoes. Right. C, um, I really am not going to put it past them to have me uh, a part of it or not. You just, you don't know. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing next week, if I'm even going to the finale party, if I'm, whatever they tell me to do, I will do. As you go in the wonderful yeah. world of BB. Yes, yeah. Tala, do you think that somebody in my situation would deserve a chance to try and get into the house? Like, do you think, or do you okay. think my time with the show is over? I was a part of it. I was the twist and that's all you got. You need in the house. That, look at that. Like, look at that question. The thing is, honey, it's Big Brother. Anything yeah. is possible. Anything well, can happen. And my exactly. speculation. Like, look, honey, we be. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> oh my god, so chill. Chill's cute. Love it. I can put you in my pocket. Um. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like anything, anything goes. Like you just never know, right? Right. You I'm never so, know. I mean, you never know. You just have really to, like, stay, well, stay busy and always love it. Exactly. Yeah. Stay busy. You always love it. Talk out of this that Tala's on the show now. And, Scott, you need to learn to retweet shit. You get on your phone right now, <laughs> and you retweet that this interview is happening. I oh, my I'm God, I'm dying. I feel nauseated. Tala, were Listen, you Listen, I'm following you, Tala. I hope you follow me. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to find you to follow you. Yes, yes, I'm a follower of yours, and I'm obsessed. You know, I would like to – here's the funny thing with me and technology. Like, I would get on my cell phone right now and tweet what's going on if I had, like, the Internet on my cell phone. Like, I literally – 
do not do Twitter. I just got a Twitter account like a week ago. Congrats. Welcome to Twitter. Welcome and now look Twitter. at me. I've got a computer at my butt and two phones in my hand. Like, I'm Love so it. full of technology. It's crazy. So I will, yeah. uh, I'm going to tweet all of this because this you is so good. So, uh, I'm so honored. What are you doing yeah. in Toronto? Are you going to Fashion Week? I'm, I went to Fashion Week last night. Nice. Um, I was a date. Liza, we had so much fun. Nice. And, and I felt like when we were there, I totally tried to, like, you know, join the runway. But I was like, no, I'm not going to get kicked out of a fashion hey. show. You but will not. The front page of Toronto, local girl. Well, not local. Um, but <laughs> but a tourist. Just local Canadian. Over the runway. Um, but uh, no, I love it. I've been mean, exploring. I just got lost a little bit right now. I took it. Oh, that's cute. Liza wasn't getting back to me, and then so she was busy doing a show, so yes. she's busy for me, and then here I am, I just show up. I was like, AJ, get me her address. Like, how crazy. I just like, hello, open your door, I'm here, busy. Yes, <laughs> totally. Really like, Love it. Busy. So did you watch, you've been watching the last couple weeks? Are you kidding me? Like, it's obviously just amazing, and... It's just like right now I'm looking at Twitter. I'm like, what is going on in the house? Like, it's just, it is crazy. Have you been watching the live feed? Crazy. Shocking. I really just like, I'm still picking my job off the floor. But, you know, it takes you a little while after something like this happens to, oh, yeah. um, to bounce back. I'm finally starting to watch the episodes. It's not so painful. Like, I just wanted to crawl through the TV and hug myself. Oh I, my gosh, you're so funny. <laughs> just crawl on the TV and hug myself. Like, I saw that happening. It was crazy. Hugging myself right now. I'm not. I'm so body hugging myself. <laughs> oh, Kala, you are such a treat. I feel so honored to be chatting you with you. Oh, you're making you're, me you're, you're hard. My, I'm you're just my girl. The Maritimes loves you. And when I do the Contessa Drag Queen World Tour, you are going to come. You're going to be one of my bridesmaids. Oh my gosh, wait, wait a minute. You're gonna you're doing a drag tour? Well, so you know I, I do drag, right? You met Love Contessa it. on the show. Ah! What did you think of her cleavage? It was just phenomenal, right? I mean, it definitely like it made like it made me question my own, but I mean I don't have bra. It's a lot of padding. A lot of time, but she fills up the TV. She fills up the I TV. I love it. So when Gary said to me at Sideshow after after our elimination, and he said, "Girl," he said, "Your rate is at least gonna double." I said, "I'm hoping for a quadruple." And he was like, "And so that's what I'm kind of like working on right now. I'm working on." Um, and then you're I'm gonna come on. west. You're gonna yeah. go west. Go and west. I lived in Vic. I'm gonna go out there. I'm, I'm reaching out to all the clubs. I want to do some drag appearances and. You know, do it! Stuff. Yeah, I've got to oh do it. Oh my goodness! Like when I was in, like in, like when I went to Mexico with Gary and yes. like the radio station that took us. We it was so much fun. We wow. went to a bar and like it was just like the drag show. It was just so. Oh. I absolutely loved it. Good. And I was just like, oh my goodness! Please do my makeup. Like yeah. <laughs> Please do it. This is so great. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see, oh wait to see how this is gonna go. So it sounds like we're gonna meet. I think we'll have to meet. We. I really. It's a must, yeah. and I'm hoping. You know, yeah. after uh, the show ends, as the summer comes, there's World Pride. There's Gay Pride in Vancouver, Alberta. So I'm hoping I can do the tour. Oh my goodness! Yes, come to Edmonton. Do the Pride there. It's so much fun. It's wildness. Absolutely love it. Visit. Sweet. Sorry about it. What are you doing? Um, well, right now I'm just sitting here. My dog is staring at me. We, we want to meet my dog? Yeah. yeah. He's so, he's What's the your dog's thing. name? Give me, give me uh, dog. I'm not stuffed, by the way. Oh, you're right. Look at my baby. Oh, oh what is he? Uh, um, baby. What's he What's What kind of dog? This is Basil. Basil! Wait, do you want to be Bible? <laughs> <laughs> I almost named him Bible, but you know, that was a bit too sacrilege. But, Flash, well, is it live right now? Yes. It is live right now. Is yeah. anybody asking me any questions, Tala? Uh, honey, my phone's not even near me. It's over there. Wow. Okay. Did the computer Let's screen in front of you? Question. I'm so fascinated with these. Amazing. That you are so cute. Hey, oh. you guys, Tala is in on my interview right now. Ain't nobody else going to get this. No, 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 I told you to crash the interview. We're giving you at least 20% tonight for this interview. Like 20% for you. 
Kelly, you look cute. Oh, I hope they take good care of you in Toronto, and you, I hope you, you go to the show tomorrow. Now and you, uh, honey, you need to give the Twitter and know what is going on. I'm having yes. so much fun in Toronto. Yes, I mean, good. I was lost, I was found, someone gave me an umbrella, it didn't even work, and then <laughs> I left in another store, and then, oh, someone left an umbrella, and I was like, mm, do 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 wasn't me. Um, I mean, wasn't me. Um, I think I made a flash a couple of people when I was changing the dressing rooms and they were walking by, they don't care, it's okay, they don't have a bra. Uh, I love it. I love it. I just, you and I could talk for hours. We just, like, I feel like you and I are on that same speed. So if we were in the house together, do you think that we would be, like, together or, like, off? Awesome? Yeah. No, I I totally think we I gravitate like easily to like zany wacky people that just have larger than life personalities like mm -hmm. you do, and oh, I gravitate I gravitate towards them. I feel like um you definitely would have been like one of my top favorite girls. We would have connected and for sure. Um, and, then, but, and then you know what happened? I probably would have turned my back on you. Just kidding. Oh girl, well you know what our alliance would have been called? Our what? alliance would have been called the Black Widows. What? Our, so our alliance would have been called the Black Widows. Really? And we would have been venomous, and I would have eaten every one of them Ooh. then. Like, venomous! Poking um, them down. No, I was trying to get them to call me the Black Widow. In the DR, I was like, yeah. fuck these guys. I'm going to yeah. chew them up and spit them out. Call me the Black Widow. And I didn't get that edit. And they got edited. I don't understand what that means, but it sounds like... Does that devilish. Mean? You're devilish. Scandalous. Scandalous. Oh my goodness. So, um, yeah, well, I guess, like, I don't even know what to say. I'm sort of procrastinating. No, I'm not sort of procrastinating. It's really loud. Totally. No, I love it. Like, yesterday on the runway. It was so much fun. It was so yes. fun. That. Toronto Fashion Week. Is, there's, quite a bit of, there's quite a bit of fashion shows that, but I mean, like, I'm in, like, the big city. Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, amazing. And you're, like, in the big city. It's amazing. Uh, it's there's so much trouble to get into. So, so much, much style, like I totally love it. Like it's. Been, Are you guys hooking up with anyone else today? I definitely, like there's definitely been like the eye candy. Oh. Tell you're going oh, on the side show tomorrow, everywhere. right? You think you'll see Gary and Peter while you're there? Ooh, tell side me show. what you're doing tomorrow. Tell me. Well, it's been confirmed. So yeah. Oh, I'm excited. I'm definitely excited to go and watch the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. No Nazis. Like it's just. I'm telling you, I miss the house. Someone threw me over. <laughs> oh, girl, listen, are you? And I was like, drop down. Wah! Guess who's yeah, here? You ah! were so fun. Like, you were so fun. Like, you really, truly did not want to leave the house. No, like, were... no. I obviously, like, I mean, it's an experience to appreciate. And yeah. You're... And you it still just... talk to Dan? Oh, my goodness. I love Dan, the man. Yes. And, like, when he was in Edmonton, I went to hear him talk about what it means to be a leader. He is. No. And he is. So, like, I have a lot of respect for him. I appreciate his words. He's wow. Just, yeah, nice. I really appreciate his words. I'm so. Oh, I love that. Like, I will never forget day 50 or day say, 58. Yes. Was, was it day 58? Oh, my God, girl. You lasted. <laughs> you lasted right till the end. I'm hungry. <laughs> Falls off chair. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. So cute. I, who are you rooting for this season? Well, obviously me. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me take back over. Me oh, too. Yeah, like, I've been asked to leave the show. Who's <laughs> okay. Liza says. Well, really? I'm loving you. It's good my to bobble, talk to you. My bobblehead says goodbye. Oh, yes, you me. Bye. Bye. I love you. Okay. Stay Thank busy. You, love. Love no. it. Love you, girl. Oh my gosh, I'm as you see, up uh, tell us. I'm so. Look at her tiny and cute. She's oh, the she tiniest, cutest girl. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I just really want to ask you. Tell, I'm cooking. Can you hold on for ten minutes? I just want a little bit of that, but I don't feel good. Nauseated. My phone. Okay, fucking. Oh. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> She's dead. You can't see her, but she died. Yeah. She died. Right. She fell. She did her Another signature fall. Another thing, going to get fucking blamed for in the Big Brother house. Yeah, yeah, you'll be crucified. <laughs> Tyler, yeah. I love you. I Canada lives for those moments when you fall on your face. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Every moment. Uh, okay, I asked Martina's question, what would your strategy be? Kimberly has other questions. I'm just going to try and do them quick. On the live feeds one day, you were explaining to Nate and Allison, oh, blah, 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 I said this. She basically, remember when I asked about the drag queen process? Kimberly yeah. wants to know um, if you have, like, anyone, like, one day you're going to take somebody under your wing. And oh, cute. You know, it's funny. The, the, the drag queen family is very much um, 
you know, a, a major part of drag culture. However, it's not the only part. Um, you know, I never formulated a family. I actually never started out in a drag family, being from small St. John, New Brunswick. And by the time I got out to real drag queen culture life in British Columbia, I had already been established for a few years as a drag queen, so didn't feel it proper to fall under somebody else's wing when mine were already so big. Um, so I just, yeah, so I may take some, some little drag queens under my wing. We'll see. Like, it's, uh... Yeah. Uh, another question she asked, she had many. Uh, who do you think Canada fell in love with most, Scott or Contessa? Oh, that's so sweet. You know what? This is what's so near and dear to my heart. Tal is eating over there. It's so freaking cute. Um, so near and dear to my heart. This is like an, an emotional moment for here, for me here to confess that the, the coolest moment uh, that this whole process has given to me is that in the 16 years that this drag queen has taken over Scott's life, Scott has gone out and trumped that bitch. Like, took down <laughs> Big Brother Canada. The entire process was done by Scott. Scott got to shine and make them love him. You know, Contessa gets invited to all these parties and gets to get all the accolades when she does something great in the community. And Scott just kind of works at the hospital during the day and pays the bills. So it's kind of a really cool emotional thing for me to... Um, have been able to say that Scott did this. So I really hope that Canada fall, you know, fell in love with Scott, maybe a smidge more than Contessa, but you know, maybe maybe it's equal, hard to say. I uh, I uh, definitely gave them a lot of Scott with a side of Queen. I agree and I also appreciate that. I give them Scott. Yeah. Um, uh, who well, it's a long question, but basically, who would you have aligned with? I know you a bit told me the strategy was to go after those heads, but like, was there anyone you were really liking just from your sort of observation? Um, there were some people that I was definitely liking right off the bat. I mean, I was curious about, um, you know, Ika, and I was curious about, you know, Kenny. I really thought he did look sweet. He looked nice. Um, I actually did kind of like Sarah, even though I called her Skeletor in the... Uh, <laughs> in the war room the whole time because she wore that skeleton pajama yeah. outfit. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, Skeletor's coming. She's making slap. What's she going to do with it? Um, anyway, I did I did like her. I did. It's hard to say. Like, God, I'm not going to lie. I really didn't like any of them in the beginning. I just was like, how am I going to relate? Join the club. And, listen, how am I going to relate and connect to any of them? I was trying to figure out a way. Um, so I was really looking for my strong women and my gays, and I didn't see a lot of strong women and gay men in the beginning. So I was trying to figure out where I would fit. And, I mean, you can't freaking hear them, so how much are you going to well, figure out? This is that, girl. This is that. Right. Uh, another question. Uh, uh, no. We're going to see. you are so cute over there eating on the floor. Ah! With your... I want to pinch your cheeks. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a smidge. But it's like you're on the Big Brother house with the cameras. Just do what you normally do when you eat. Can I just um, say my my friend said the funniest thing to me when I got out of the house. He's like, Scott, for next time, when you enter the Big Brother house, if you ever do, and they wrap around a microphone around your neck, don't eat. <laughs> and he was so uh, right. So right. I, I was just like, eating. Yeah, how did, how did you I was eating like I wasn't even tasting it. How do you adjust to the cameras? It was funny. Is it easy for you? So, yeah. You not hear I, Jackie. I don't know if you can hear me. I can't hear Jackie. You can't. He just asked him, how did you adjust to the cameras? Like, was it easy to sort of adjust? Just one sec. Um, you know what? Jackie, try and talk now. Can talk you hear me? To... No. No. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, no. So I really had no problems with the cameras and the microphones. Like we actually were competing for them to turn and look at us at times. Yeah. Um, and trying to hog the camera attention. And uh, so it wasn't an adjustment really. I actually was quite shocked at how well I adjusted. Like within the first couple of minutes, because you know how when you're sitting at home about a week before you think you're about to enter the house and you're eating your chips and your dip, and like yeah. your gut, your guts hanging out, and you like you fart a couple times. Suck it in. Can't do this anymore. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I was teaching myself to start practicing, but then when I got into the house, it just, I was walking around in my underwear. I was like, I didn't care. Like, because, you know, I'm like, that's, that's like reality TV. It's like they want to see the realness. I okay. concur. Yeah. If there's any more uh, 
major questions for you right now. I have now. a question that just asks Scott who he would align with. If you guys must be health. feeding this through, what, Twitter and Facebook? Twitter, Facebook, everything right now is happening. Wow. YouTube. I have it up too, but I'm afraid if I leave your screen, I will like mess up, so I'm staying here. <laughs> it I'm takes me a half an hour. It takes me a half an hour to turn the TV on. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I have a quick. Yeah, someone wanted to know who Scott would align with if he was in the house. We just asked that. <laughs> okay. Audio. Um, my, I'm trying to look on YouTube, but there's no. It's okay. Of we're we're almost done in. anyway. I know Scott, you wanted to try and get out of here at 7:30. Right. So yeah, they're not really asking anything. Yes. Yeah. So let's leave it on sort of. You watched some episodes. You got to see, you know, not only your edit, but. Uh, now you get to actually hear some of those house guests, and I know you're not entirely caught up, so it's hard to say, but who are you hating? Who are you like, go take a hike, you shouldn't have been cast, get the hell out of this house, and who are you, like, who do you think is a front runner to actually win this game right now? Oh my god, okay, this is a tough question because I'm Canadian, I try to be nice. Um, I'm not nice, I'm very mean to you guys until I talk to you in person. Right, which you're giving your you're giving your truth, right? Which is why yeah. we watch the show. Like when yeah. Peter got on my back uh, during sideshow and beat me up for like you know trashing some of the previous players. Are you nuts? First of all, I said gear down, big rig. I was like, when you put these kinds of people into a social experiment in a Big Brother house, they are doing that on purpose so that the viewers can decide right away who they're going to love and who they're going to hate. So of course, I'm yeah. going to have people I didn't like. And of course, I'm going to have people I love. So right now, I'm absolutely hardcore loving. Um, you know, Allison. I really hope she turns it around. I'm rooting for her. I really love Ika, and um, John. I kind of like a little bit now. It's hard for me to connect with like the twenty-something people. Like I like them, but they're like kids. Um, so I really have no interest in Andrew whatsoever. Cannot stand him. Can't wait to see him go. And Paul, who I very endearingly dubbed Paulina, the whole Sorry. time we were. The whole time we were in the war room, I couldn't get her name right. I kept looking at the television screen going, Paulina, you opened your closet this morning and took a look. That's the best you could come up with, that outfit. What? Like, you're on television, Paulina. That, yes. sure doesn't not, that was hard to watch. So I'm not loving Paul at all. I'm really rooting for, like, Allison, Ika, um, maybe, maybe John. I'm going to go check my rice for the fucking assholes who I'm making dinner for, and one of them just got here, so say hi to another hi, one. Hi, darling. Okay, fine. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Good, buddy. What up? How's it going? It's going oh. good. Oh, my God. I can't see your face. Am I about to be surprised? It's <laughs> oh, now we can see you. Now we can see you. How's it going? Shut up. How's it oh, going, my God. Scott? Did you guys have this planned? I feel so special. Hi, sexy. How's it going? Oh, uh, you know, I'm I'm up and down, up and down, but it's going okay. Like it's been a crazy experience. I obviously didn't think that I was gonna um, enter into the Big Brother House season two this way. Um, so it's it's definitely an adjustment, but I obviously am enjoying uh, the ride. What are you guys all in town for? Um, Tal is uh, <laughs> making an appearance, I think, somewhere tomorrow. Yes. Scott, this is what you have to look forward to. I'm trying to do an interview with you, and yes. I'm. Making Fucking dinner right now because oh, I have these people showing. Like you have a new family right now. Like you I love it. These people. I love it. I'm all about the family. So behind the scenes, we're I feel like we're the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, it is like the Kardashians. I love it. AJ, where are you going? He left you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm You're so. Dr where are you living now? Are you in? Are you still in Ontario? Yeah, yeah I'm just in Scarborough, just outside of Toronto. Oh, amazing. So you're close. That's good. Yeah, Your life is going terrible. well. We, we live like 15 minutes apart. I live five Right by Topaz. Topaz. Nice. Gary's in town. Anil's family's local. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm going to come visit you guys for sure soon, and we'll definitely all link up. And uh, you guys can meet Contessa, and we'll have a Yay! wild time. For Pride, at least. You'll be here in June, for sure. Yeah, AJ can meet her privately. That's okay. That was seriously... This is funny. Like, I hope a bajillion people view this, because... That's like a peek behind like what our life is actually like. Like I'm in my condo, yeah. eating fucking butter yeah. chicken right now. Yeah, and I, I love like, it. Pala and AJ showing up, and they're sitting in my living room. So uh, I am. I think we're done. I more want to let you go uh, to yeah. get on with your Montreal night, but I this yeah. isn't even close to the end of us. Like no, it really is isn't. 
Yeah. Liza, listen, we're so going to be tight. I really can't wait to just talk to you all privately and personally. I have yeah. more questions, and as as this um, process works its way along, I'd love for you all to be my therapist and help me figure it out. You are actually going to have a – you're going to need a therapist. Let me put it that way. You're going to need – give it some time, but you're going to be like, um, Liza? What the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, this is yeah, a I will. process for you. There's like, once you get evicted, then you're still watching the show, then the show's over, then there's six months later, then there's a year later, like, yeah. you're going to be on an emotional roller coaster for a while. Oh, big time a while, I know, yeah. so I can't wait. I'll be seeking advice from you guys, and thank you so much for taking the time with me. Um, yeah. Nate has finally gotten on um, on Twitter, so I if have. you find yeah. I yeah, if you find Nate, I'm sure he'll he'll chat with you. Do and, me a favor, and you have his number, right? Can you just shoot my number and tell him to be in touch with me, and then we'll do the same. I will. I certainly will. Have a fabulous time in Montreal. It was I a love serious you. pleasure talking to you. And Thank you. Um, uh, the second your brain stops for a minute, just call me, and we'll figure this all out. I will, darling. I really will. I thank you. I love you. And mm -hmm. let's uh, enjoy this ride together for season two. You got it. Mwah. Bye, Bye, Jeff. Bye. 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 Bye.